Welcome to Smart Social Secret Tips Live. This is Cami Huiza coming you to you today and wanting to talk to you about change. Oh my goodness, so much change going on right now, especially in the world of social media. So if you use social media for your business, you use social media for as as you, as a practitioner like I do, you maybe give it as a service. Um, there may be a little bit of you know stress right now because things that used to work aren't working as well. Um, so I'm here to just talk to you about some ideas that I have for you to absolutely not be freaking out about this. So don't panic. All right. So I've got you covered. I'm going to talk a little bit about the problem as it stands right now. And I'm also going to um, give you a couple of ideas for how you can kind of mitigate these problems as you go forward. So I'm talking about social media as a whole, and I'm going to be honest, there's like things going on in almost every platform that are a little concerning, that maybe are stressful for people that are, you know, small business owners. Also the way that things are going, I know, I understand there's a lot of, of, of angst and stress and, you know, all the layoffs that are now were announced this week by both Twitter and by both fit and Facebook. And are these platforms even good anymore? I was talking to some of my team. I'm like, how will I even be able to connect with the people I need to connect with? So don't panic, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic, but definitely tell me if you're here. So um, I'm looking at my comments here. I'm going to pull them up over here so I can see you. Let me know you're here. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, just say, yes, I'm watching or say the word yes or something like that in the comments. So I know you're watching. We're across multiple platforms. So I want to uh, make sure that I see you. Okay, cool. So let me absolutely pull up my screen. I'm going to um, bring up the cause of the changes. So in the end of the day, I think that the, hi, Anne, how are you doing? Oh, say hi. So I can say hi. Hi, Anne. Um, good to see you. So as I tell you all of these things, I'll, I'll call, also greet you as you guys come in. But um, here are the things that I think are the three main disruptors that are going on right now. Hello, Judy. Hello, Molly. Oh my gosh, Molly. How are you? It's been forever since we've talked. Awesome. Um, cool. So I think there's these three disruptors that are really in the marketplace right now. Um, those are really that general distrust that people are having overall. And I'll show you some stats around that here in just a minute. General distrust of every kind of institution. That is like really prevalent right now. Number two is a change in interests. So I, I wouldn't call it disinterest. Some of it is disinterest, but people are switching around. So first of all, let's just be realistic. Um, we're coming out of a pandemic. I know we're not, you know, out of it ever, but we are coming out of that, you know, period when people were at home and they had a lot of more time to engage in social media activities. And by right now, people are trying to work in their commute back into their time or they're working back in more client work or whatever it is uh, on the business side that they're working in. Plus on the, on the personal side, maybe they're spending more time with their friends because they really didn't get that time. I still am really enjoying the times that I'm getting together with my friends. And during that time, I'm not engaging, right? So remember that there's some changes fun foundationally right now to the way people are inter interacting with it. There's also some demographic changes, which I will actually show you in a minute, but these change changes and in interests are something that, you know, can be a little bit disconcerting as you're trying to make things work and then um, fragmentation and silos. So I don't know about you, but there's more social media platforms, networks, possibilities than there ever have been before. You know, you don't just have the main ones. I remember when there was only Twitter and Facebook, you know, and we don't have that anymore. You know, we have LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, um, you know, and more. And so I, I know that we all are like a little bit drowning in that, especially as communicators and practitioners. And most of the, you, you who are listening today, I believe are um, communicators because that's, that's kind of my audience. So I, I know for us, things that we used to work, like, you know, I could used to put out a um, social media post on Facebook for the social media breakfast of Houston, for example, and people would see it, like they would interact with it, um, they'd share it, they do all those things. That is not happening anymore. It's just not. And so usually I run an ad with that to kind of mitigate that a little bit, but even that is not really working that well anymore. So um, how do we do this and how do we keep this going? How do we like come over this hump? So let me just go through a couple of those um, changes in, in a little bit bit more depth to the stats. I think those are important to know. So there's a couple of different research studies that are out there. This is the Edelman Trust Barometer. This is from the Edelman Trust Barometer. 
by the way, if you want this presentation, I know there's a lot of information in it. Um, I would like you to DM me on whatever platform you're on. Please um, send me a DM and I will get this um, whole presentation to you, plus the links I'm going to be talking about today um, in the DM. I, I'm probably not going to do it in the actual feed because, again, the platforms don't really love it when you put the links in the feed. So, Hey, you, uh, you know, something I'm learning too, is if, if you, you're going to depress the amount of people that are, that see it, if you put too many links. So DM me and I'll send it to you. It won't be like immediately today. Cause I've got a bunch of other things I'm doing today, but I will get it to you within the next, you know, couple of days. So just send me a DM and I'll, I'll send it back to you. But anyway, th this is the, um, Edelman trust barometer, and this came out fairly recently. It's the 22 one and really overall, people are just not really trusting social media anymore. Shocking, right? Shocking that we have an eight point drop globally in the trust of social media because there's just been a lot of fake, fake, fake news. There's been a lot of manipulation we've heard about in the news about the social media platforms. So people are just a little wary of it, you know, and maybe a little bit over, uh, you know, we've just been through an election cycle that usually like wears people out. They don't really want to be on social media during those times because think about the reason you go to social media. You go there to engage with other people that are like-minded and you, um, you, and during election cycles, you know, you run into a lot of people that don't think exactly like you do. Um, and by the way, they always didn't, but just during this time it comes out. So, um, people are a little tired. So that that's one reason you'll see a lot of pullback right now. We're going into a holiday season. That's going to be problematic too, but look at that, you know, owned media and social media have lost a lot, um, in the last year and traditional media is down. And so are search engines even. So people are just overall kind of not very trusting of everything. Um, the another thing I want to show you is the younger generation has really started to do some things that are very different. So um, this is really for young teens, okay, for teenagers and kind of, you know, the 20s, early 20s as well. What I am seeing, and I have three teenagers, so I do see this in real time, is that they're, they're gravitating toward TikTok and Snapchat. I know you guys think Snapchat just like went away forever. Guess what? It didn't. Oh my gosh, no. It's like actually made a resurgence in the last year or two. So Snapchat is growing like gangbusters. They figured out that little algorithm for teens, especially. I'm not saying you should jump to it. I'm just telling you that a lot of the, the, the younger end of the market is moving out of our traditional um, media that we're in. Um, they're still a little bit in Facebook and I'm going to be I'm going to caution you on Facebook with the younger generation. Obviously, they're not on it as much, but Instagram has um, kind of forced them to have a Facebook account in order to have stats. So a lot of them have a Facebook account that they literally never look at, but they have it because they have to have it for Instagram. And that drives the numbers up for Facebook. Just putting that out there, unless you hadn't thought about that. And as you see, Facebook has taken a dive with them. So, so you see that right there. And by the way, this right here, um, is a, a really great study to, uh, to look at just to see what's going on. Twitter's going down. Twitch has gone down, which is crazy because a lot of teens use that. WhatsApp has gone down. Reddit has gone down. It's all across the board Tumblr. So you can see the only two media, um, that are growing right now and they don't have LinkedIn on here, which I think is a real mistake because I do believe, especially for the business crowd, LinkedIn is growing. So anyway, but this is for young kids that are teenagers and they're not into LinkedIn yet, I guess. So um, about a quarter of US adults under 30 now are saying that they regularly get their news on TikTok. And I know you've probably heard this in the news. So how do you find news on TikTok? I know it, it's really crazy. People are looking there for how to do things just like you would on YouTube, but it's shorter right? That's why YouTube came out with shorts. Um, short video is really important. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But short video is, you know, people's attention spans are like this. And I'm doing this long line. So <laughs> take my own advice, right? Um, so anyway, I'm going to be real quick. But a quarter of those US adults under 30 now regularly get their news on TikTok. And I just got an email the other day from a travel because I do travel and tourism a lot. So I'm on a lot of email newsletters around that. And kids and actually young adults are saying that they're getting their travel ideas and thoughts on TikTok. So a lot of different um, groups are moving to TikTok and it's not just kids. Um, you can see that it's growing for 
30 to 40 year olds, um, it's doubled over and that continues to grow. So I do believe TikTok will continue to grow unless there's some kind of government intervention or something happens. You have to kind of do worry about that because there is some Chinese interference concerns. Um, but anyway, so that's just one, one, one other platform. So I'm just wanting you to know that. I mean, I know the FBI, my FBI friends say, don't trust that TikTok, but, um, right now it's just nothing stopping it. Okay. So nothing's stopping it. So we need to think about how we can be safe there. But anyway, I, I digress. Another thing is I just wanted to throw this in here just to be clear. Um, there are a lot of, um, loyal news kind of pro Trump, pro America, religious, um, different kinds of, of, of niche platforms out there. And it's only 6% of adults, of US adults. So it's not a huge number of people. So you don't really have to worry about that. And honestly, I'd stay away from these real niche communities unless you are niche. So I will talk about that in a minute. Unless you are a niche per, a niche kind of, uh, of, an, of an issue or you're a niche kind of thing, do not you know use these platforms or don't think that you have to be there. You can use them. I, I'm not telling you what to do. Um, but I'm going to just say at the bottom, I thought it was really interesting. The percentage of alternative social media news consumers who say that that X number of people share their views, 65% um, said they found a community in these things. So I'm just going to point this out. People are looking for community. Um, and that is that's going to be one of our one of our secret weapons here in just a minute. So I'm going to talk about now. So I've talked about the problem. All right, you guys all know the problem. Sorry, are you all depressed now? Say yes, I'm depressed in the in the chat. If you <laughs> you're depressed by this, because I'm a little depressed by it myself. Um, but how do we manage this change? That's the question, right? How do we take this? and actualize it for what we do with clients, what we do for our own businesses, what we do for all of those things. And here are the three things that I think are really critical right now. Number one is community building. I mean, community building, community building, community building. It is so, so, so important because I don't care which platform you're on. So, you know, this is where it helps to be really old like me <laughs> and have been doing this forever and ever and ever um, is that the, these things have changed and shifted. I've seen them change and shift so many times. You know, there was a time that everybody was on Twitter and we were all on Twitter and we were all in, interconnecting and that was happening. Right now, Twitter, um, except for in specific communities, like if you have a chat, an online Twitter chat, or you do an audio um, kind of thing, you, Twitter has kind of died for our industry. Um now for journalists, it hasn't, right? They're still putting news out there. So it's a really great place to connect with journalists and do all that. But there was a time when Twitter was like the Facebook kind of thing where you would just, you know, just you could put out something and somebody would respond to you almost immediately. So that that went away long ago. And then it switched to what it is now, which is more newsy, more quick, more like on the ball. And then everything moved over to Facebook where we had, you know, a really great feed. We could connect with people. And then groups happen there, right? So groups have become really important. And that is still very important in Facebook, although I see a decline even in that. And that scares me a little bit because there's not a whole lot of other places to have really powerful groups, except for kind of closed platforms like maybe a Slack on Slack or on something like another closed platform that's like Circle is one that you buy, Circle. And then another one is I, I like is called Heartbeat. And it's like where you can build community. And then there's Discord. So I am on a lot of really vibrant communities on Discord. Um, there are a couple on um, Slack that exist as well. Um, I'm, I'm waving hi to um, Jenny Dietrich because she has a really good um, Spin Sucks Slack channel. Anyway, so there's just a lot of, uh, and on Discord, I'm waving hi to Mark Schaefer, who has also a really great uh, marketing Discord uh, Discord channel called Rise. So uh, there's a lot of possibilities outside of the traditional channels for community. But for you and for brands, what I would say is that you need to start creating that community with people. So that brings me to engaged content. You notice I didn't say engaging content. This is not about you making better and better and better content. This is about you connecting with the people that are in your current community. So um, me asking you now, say so like, you know, always engaging with people. Me asking you to say something in the comments so I know that you're here. That's engaging. But even more so, um, then me making content and putting it out there is me going out and proactively engaging with you and your content. And that at scale 
is a little difficult, but there are some things out there that are working. So I will talk about that in sec. I, I don't know if I have it in the in the next slide or no, not, but there's some really cool things you can do with many chat and other kinds of things to do these things at scale. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. And then follow your audience. So knowing where your particular audience is at any given time is super important. Like right now, I know that LinkedIn is where my audience is really starting to coalesce. Everybody's coming to LinkedIn. They're coalescing here. And I had somebody the other day in the marketing and PR side of things tell me that they felt felt like um, LinkedIn really had lost its charm. No, they weren't connecting with people like they used to, so on and so on. Um, but what I'm finding is the algorithm in LinkedIn works only if you make proactive outreach first or, or in addition to what you're doing here. So I can't just come on here and live stream once a week and expect to have a lot of engagement. You have to come on and engage all the time. So uh, I'll talk about that, I think, in the next slide or two. But I want to show you that um, one of the things that's really important to see is where the trust does lie. Because I told you earlier, they don't trust anybody anymore, right? But what they, who they do trust is my coworkers, my CEO. I thought that was interesting. So people are trusting scientists, which I find interesting. I didn't think that that would be so high, but I'm glad it is. Um, national health authorities. I mean, you wouldn't have thought that would have been as high with all of the, the complaining about it, but people in your local community. So I really like these ones, but people in your local community is really important. So like taking social media and what you do local can really, really help. He agrees with that comment. Thank you, Bart, very much for that agreement. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, there is a really great opportunity here to dig into that trust area, which is people want to deal with one-on-one -on -one with people that they know. I mean, that's just really what this says here, right? Their, their coworkers, their community, um, their CEO, their people who run their companies or the people who are in authority in their companies. They don't want to listen to government. They don't want to listen to journalists. They don't want to listen. And they say CEOs as a general as a general, they don't like, but they like their CEO. So that's interesting too. So people are looking for um, people that they know. I know this is like a, a tired statement that they know, like, and trust. So I would just say that you can be as a brand, somebody that they know, like, and trust if you um, have engagement with them. So uh, that, that's a really important one. And I think I put that here. So yeah, engaged content. Here's what I think of as engaged content. Number one, short video. Very, very helpful to have that short video. I know I need to work on that too. So short video is really important. People just want to find what they want, connect with it, be either entertained or um, educated and move on. Um, number two is podcasts. Actually, the long form podcast works really well too, but short, I would keep them under like half an hour right now because just people don't have the time they used to have. Um, even the commutes are kind of changed because some people are community commuting, some people aren't. And in the past, people would listen to um, the podcast on their commute. I think Anne is here. She she used to listen, like when I had my podcast going, You when you were going back and forth to Dallas, you listened to po podcasts, right? Um, anyway, let me know in the, in the chat if you're still here. So yeah, she would do that, but I don't know how many people are doing that kind of listening, deep listening. So tell me in the chat, if you're listening to podcasts right now, that would be interesting. Um, so permission messaging would be the other one. So I was talking about many chat there, but there's other chat bots, but many chat is a really good one where you can, um, connect with people, especially on, LinkedIn, or not LinkedIn, you can't do it on LinkedIn, on um, Facebook and Instagram, you can actually set it up where, you know, you're talking to people and you tell them, hey, put the word, you know, uh, presentation in the comments. And then the, the chat bot will automatically send them that presentation. It's really powerful. It's really helpful, especially on, I mean, still Facebook is a very powerful platform. So is Instagram. So it is a great way to engage with your audience that way. Oh, good. See, Andrea always listens to podcasts. That's great. And it's just, it's, and the, the reason why I say podcasts, by the way, is that podcasts go into depth. It's like you're listening to somebody in your ear and like it, you become connected to that person. You feel like you know them. You feel like you have a relationship with them. And it's a really powerful way to build those relationships with people um, at scale. And that's the hardest part right right now is building those relationships at scale. And that's what you have to do in order to be to win this game, right? Um, and at scale, 
um, can mean different things, by the way. So I don't think you need millions of fol followers and millions of connections in order to um, grow and to um, be successful in social media. Um, there are some brands that need that because that's what they do. And um, they're, you know, maybe they have Super Bowl commercials and they're, you know, they're Adidas shoes, they're Nike, they're, um, you know, Starbucks, they're these big, 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 you know, um, things. And those people also have to do this engaging content and they're looking for ways to connect with their um, audience. And that's why they have things like loyalty cards and those kinds of things, because they're tokenizing the relationship, um, which by the way, is another thing that's coming up, but I'm not going to talk about right now because tomorrow I'm talking about it, but that's really around the web three and all of that kind of like crazy stuff. It sounds crazy right now, but I do believe a lot of those pieces are coming together. So they're like virtual worlds and there's, oh my gosh, there's so much. And tomorrow at Social Media Breakfast, we're going to be talking about that. Um, tomorrow morning at 8.30, um, it'll live stream just like this does, but also will be in person. And today I'm actually giving a presentation in a virtual world called Spatial. So I'm going to be in Spatial with a group of people giving a presentation just like I am right now, but in a virtual world. So there is a lot going on around that, but that's bleeding cutting edge. For right now, what I would say is that you need to create those relationships, get them on permission messaging where you can talk to them. Um, and I don't mean sell to them, I mean talk to them. Um, email where you can actually create that relationship and continue to um, give a lot of value through that email and also sell through that email, uh, you know, because once they're on their, you're on their email list, you can offer them things. And if they don't like it, they'll leave your list. And honestly, that's fine too. So you just want to connect with these people and make sure that you're having that going. Thank you, John. Um, this is really important. So, and then the pro, and then finally the proactive connecting, this is the thing that nobody does or they don't do it well. Let's just say that. Um, Brands do not do this very well. And for a lot of reasons, there's number one, it's hard as a page, like a Facebook page or a, or a LinkedIn page to go engage with people, you know, cause you're this avatar of a logo engaging with people. So that's rough. I know that, but you need to be answering every question. You need to be sharing other people's content. Like you need to be going out there and finding great content and sharing it because guess what? When you share that content, I don't mean steal it. I mean, hit that little share button and share it. You are absolutely giving that person who created that content um, a, a dopamine boost because they have worked very hard on putting this stuff together. I mean, I was up this morning, you know, early putting all of these slides together for you guys, making sure that everything was in place and also looking at my stuff for this afternoon. And, um, you know, we work hard on putting this content together. So when you share it, by the way, share this share this video if you want to. Um, it's really powerful. Like you create a relationship with me when you share my, my content and I would create the relationship with you when I share yours. So sharing is really critical. Um, I heard some of the other, the other day say, I hardly ever share anything. I don't share anything. And I'm like, that is a mistake. That is a, a capital mistake. And brands, when they share or when they connect with people, people get very excited when a brand talks to them. They're like, wow, they, they responded because guess what? 90% of people never respond. One of the things we do at Zoetica with, with my team is we are, um, well, that's what people hire us to do. We come in and we do that community management. We call it community management, not social media management. We are there to um, connect and manage with people. So I don't know how to say that any more, you know, succinctly, but that is actually the secret sauce, the secret to everything in many ways. Um, I did put my bit.ly link here for a little, um, a little a thing that I put together called the two by two, which teaches you how to do this connection. Um, so if you are like, how do you do that? Like, can you go in more detail? That's there. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I've done lots and lots of live streams around this specific topic, but I would love for you to grab that. And um, it's at bit.ly. Dot, uh, forward slash S S S connect. And it's capital S's and capital C and then lowercase connect. Unfortunately, the, it is caps sensitive. So you have to do it just like this. So I would love for you to do that. And again, if you can't get this and you want to get it from me directly, I'm happy to DM you this. Just DM me wherever, whatever platform you're listening to this on, and I will respond to you from there. Um, okay. So that's engaged content. Um, not engaging, but engaged. And I just wanted to put one more thing up here. You might want to screenshot this. Um, this is from the Pew Internet Research. Uh, oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. This is from the Infinite, the Infinite Dial, which is the um, Edison. 
And again, I do have the link to this research study, but this shows you where people are right now, the people and their ages. So if you are dealing with like a um, business crowd, look at that. Facebook is still 61% of people, but now they may be there for personal reasons and that may, that might be declining, but look at that real quick. And I think that's really powerful. Um, 10% are um, on, on, um, you know, Instagram and 7% are on TikTok, which is interesting. Uh, you've even got people on Snapchat, um, still a 7% on Twitter. So that's good. Um, Pinterest, interesting. Not, a lot of people don't think about Pinterest. It's a great place to um, connect with people who are searching for specific things. They don't, again, have, unfortunately, LinkedIn on here. I think that's a huge error on their part, but they have never really had it. So I would hope that they would add it eventually. So to me, I, I look at Pew Internet Research and, and LinkedIn is just inching up. And I do believe as people leave these different platforms, they're going to be looking for a place. And I feel like from the business perspective, you must be on LinkedIn. You must be at least have your profile in order on LinkedIn so that people know who you are. And by the way, it's one of your top 10 results in in, in Google. So you really need to be on LinkedIn. So um, that's, that's where I'm at with the LinkedIn thing. But again, knowing where your audience is and catering to that audience is super, super important. Um, so that's it. That's the whole thing. I do believe that you can, I'm going to go back here, do these three things and you will absolutely um, be able to get around whatever's coming in the next few weeks. Um, again, the, the advertising and all that kind of stuff is going to shift and you need to be, have your eyes open. I'm going to be having my eyes open. I'm going to be talking about this a lot, um, on my channel. So definitely follow me wherever you are. Obviously you probably did already, but I would love, love, love to have you, um, continue to um, engage with me. I am, uh, I spend every day thinking about this. So, um, you know, it's sometimes maybe my, um, my, uh, <laughs> maybe it's my downfall in some ways. I don't know. It's, it's, it's bad. So yeah, it just reminds me of the new Taylor Swift song, you know, Nar um, hi, it's me. I'm the problem. Um, so yeah, definitely. Um, awesome. 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 Thank you for tagging your friends. I appreciate it so much. So anyway, guys, I really appreciate you taking the time today. Definitely leave your questions here. DM me if you want this presentation. I will send it to you today. I'm literally running right now from this to another presentation in um, a, a, a platform called Spatial, which is a virtual world. So I'm going to be doing a virtual world presentation. Crazy stuff. But anyway, I'm going to run for that now. But thank you so much for being here today. And if you are interested in Web3 and you're interested in all the things around around like, should we even this whole cryptocurrency, Web3, blockchain, you're hearing all these weird words. We're doing something tomorrow that is like, I'm going to pull up the actual, um, I'll pull up the, I'll pull up the uh, promo for it so you can see it. But we're going to do something tomorrow that we're going to break it down in layman's terms. So if you are like, I know I need to understand about this stuff. And um, is it a scam? Is it like, what is it? Uh, I would love, love, love to have you come for that. And that's tomorrow morning. It's um, eight. It actually starts nine o'clock for the live stream on um, Central Time. So whatever you're in, you'll have to like um, Eventbrite. So let me just really quick up. I did that first. pull it up real quick. Luckily, it's doing its thing. All right, here we go. It's slow. It's loading very slowly. I just want you to see what it is. And I will actually grab this. I will try to put this link in now. Um, some of you will get it. Some of you won't. But here it is. All right. Yep. All right. Cool. There it is. So if you guys can see the event, right, this is it. It's called Home Sweet Web 3 Home. And we're going to be talking about um, how uh, you as a marketer will can use these these um, new platforms to do that. So I would love to have you there. Um, Jennifer Tejada is going to join me. And these are our avatars in Spatial. Pretty funny, right? We use our avatars for our, our, our headshots this time. And we're going to do practical implications of Web3 for marketers, what to avoid when it comes to Web3, what you need to participate in, what you need to participate in Web3, um, the metaverse and virtual spaces demo. We're going to demo a virtual space for you. And we're going to show you some case studies that are using Web3 that are kind of interesting. So um, some big brands and things that are using Web3 at this point and concepts around that. So Anyway, um, 
I am so glad to have you here. Thank you so much for coming today and for your attention. And again, um, definitely DM me um, on LinkedIn, especially if you're on LinkedIn, make sure you DM me the, um, the request because it's really hard to find your comments later um, and find them there. So DM me, uh, just, you know, direct message me. That would be awesome. Okay, guys, I'll talk to you soon and have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Thursday. Take care. Bye.